Hello, everyone. Can everyone online hear us now? Maybe give us a thumbs up. If Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yay, we were having some sound issues, but um, we have that figured out. So um, let's get started and welcome. My name is Terry Greer. I'm from Murray State College and um, I'm here to introduce Dr. Sasmita Hazra from Cameron University and she's going to talk about building skill sets for STEM courses with open education resources. If you'll help me um, welcome Dr. Hazra. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Oh, no. okay. <laughs> oh, my God, he unplugged him. Yeah. Let me make sure. And then restart. Finally. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Sushmita Hazra from Cameron University. I'm a physicist. I teach uh, astronomy, basic physics classes, um, general physical science classes there. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about my experience uh, using OER, so teaching physics classes, how they have been helpful to my students and student success I'll be talking about. Um, so at the beginning, um, since the track of my talk is um, aligning education with workforce need, um, let me start with a personal story. Uh, last spring, my son was in kindergarten. He had a career day in his class. He was all excited in the morning um, because he will be talking few, telling few lines about he wants to be an automobile engineer designing fancy cars, <laughs> okay? And that <laughs> afternoon he came home he was very excited. Mommy, I changed my mind. What happened? Henry is going to be a YouTuber. I think I'm going to join Henry. <laughs> Henry is his best friend. <laughs> so I was like, wow, kids are thinking about having social media influencer as their game. So getting back here now, um, Forbes listed like 30 fastest growing job in next 10 years. As you see, of course, social media influencer is not there. <laughs> now, uh, when I see those, uh, 22 of them are like STEM background job. And in Oklahoma, yes, we need a lot of STEM worker in this area. So um, seeing that, uh, <clears throat> I know that student enroll in my classes, they are going to have career in future in, the, in those areas. So how can I help the student to, to prepare for that using my coursework, my classes? Now, when it comes to our state, Oklahoma, I pick out some data from National Science Foundation. Like, um, as you see, in 2022, Oklahoma was, I think, 45th in the nation in terms of education. Now, when it comes to STEM, STEM degree, it's even most uh, much lower than the average of the US average, you see it's less than 30% of STEM degree graduate with bachelor degree. Um, I was also checking the data, for example, for math in middle school level, science and math, which also showed lower than national average, about 10% lower. And even that data showed that it's lower than our neighboring state like Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas. So what's going on? Like, sorry, they didn't. Okay. So I was also, no, it's not working, <laughs> okay, no, okay, I don't know what happened, but it worked now. Anyways, so that also showing the data from <clears throat> US Census Bureau about the Oklahoma workforce when you're talking about what percentage, if you see, it's lower in terms of bachelor degree, but more percentage than national average in terms 
terms of where people without a bachelor degree in STEM, so which is not a very uh, encouraging data. So I took think about what can I do for my students, and I teach at um, Lawton, which is the southwestern part of Oklahoma. A lot of our students came from rural schools where high schools are very small. And most of their high schools don't have enough resources for the science teachers to teach. So they came with it. So most, many of them come with the mindset, not knowing, oh, I want to be a doctor, but what skill set you need to be a doctor? I want to be a vet or engineer. Like, what do you need to learn for that? Yeah. Also, um, when I teach any class, I like to tell them about the basic skill set that they are going to learn <clears throat> in in my courses, which will be applicable outside of the class. So um, this is a list actually, I was doing some research showing that what are the top most skill that student learn in a STEM or STEM degree, what they have. So of course, when I was teaching any math heavy class or physics, astronomy class, problem solving and critical thinking are most important skill. But also I notice my students who are really good in problem solving critical skill, but when it comes to like explaining to other or communication, they are not so good over the time I have noticed that. So how can I help? Because when they go after graduating, go for a job interview and all, they need to build those skills. So how can I help with my courses for those students? So um, mm -hmm. here I have listed only the, those courses, which a lot of student enrollment, and I have, you know, I have included a regular research course. I'll talk more about that as well, and how these courses can help to get those skills for my students. Um, one of the course here today I would like to also say about introduction to physics and chemistry literature. This course mostly um, student with physics, um, chemistry major, sometimes biology major also take those basic course. It's like an introduction to new technology using physics, chemistry. I introduce them and every week I give them a topic to talk about. Could be anything like a, um, alternate energies, what are the alternate energy sources available now, how can, what physics, basic physics they use. Mm -hmm. So they need to talk about those in front of the class. Initially, student didn't like, I noticed, but over the time, I noticed that communication skills have improved a lot. They were able to explain it better. I just give the few basic tricks. All you need to do is talk about basic physics. You don't have to show any complicated equations and their confidence was much better. A lot of students given a very positive feedback during those in my classes. I also talk, would like to let you know that um, ours, we offer um, four-year college, but um, many of the students also look forward for some project-based learning there. I ask them to come and work with me for short-term undergraduate research. So it's not a very uh, complicated theoretical physics problem, but so many online data resources available, how to use them, how to learn some bit basic numerical skill, data analysis skill or technical skill to present their work. So I also like to talk about, like, as I say, many of our students come to class without knowing why I need to do well in this class, how it's going to be helpful. I also like to show them, oh, you know, when you do good in a physics class, you learn those skills, critical thinking, problem solving. And I should like to show them the data that even in MCAT or LSAT, the student with physics background do really good because our problem solving skill, critical thinking skills and physicists are everywhere, starting from the journalism or if you go to Wall Street, a lot of physicists are doing really well in that area. So these informations were really new to the students. Like when I was a student, nobody told me about that because those informations were not available. So letting our students know about that has been very helpful in their career choice. Now, when it comes to open educational resources, we had a really good talk this morning. I get to learn so many things, and I'm a big, big supporter of using open educational resources as much as possible. So if you see, these are the five R's that we use for um, like retain, reuse, revise, remix, redistribute. From when I think about using open educational resources, using open textbook, this has been very helpful for our students who um, 
who are from a background maybe maybe not able to afford those textbooks. That's the first thing I think about using open educational resources. Not only textbook in my classes, I use a lot of variety of material, which I'll be talking about, and many of them, like most of them are open education. Now, when it comes to finding, how can I find it? find materials that will be effective in a student learning, actively student can learn because um, most of you nowadays know that when we are teaching. Um, so we Good now? Okay. So um, these are modern learners. What is a modern learners? They want their uh, information to be brief, short, like just the generation of Instagram and TikTok. They are like very, they want everything very quick. And I also realized that they no longer spend that much of time working, uh, studying in the library. They want their information to be accessible everywhere. I understand most of them are working outside their classroom. Now, uh, so finding suitable materials. So first, my first um, step to go into the American Association of Physics Teacher website. They have an open resource, the physics curriculum available. It's an excellent resource. If any of you are teaching physics, um, that's an excellent resource available. So um, the reason I'm showing a current physics tutorial, because recently I found this one. Now, yes, in internet, so many information available. Finding a good resource is really sometimes could be difficult. So I really like those because I was um, teaching them um, electricity uh, doing series parallel circuit, electric circuit. And I often think, oh, we are always using those resistance. Students don't see it. Maybe I should find something where they use this bulb or like a, where they can see the application. Of course, I could write a lab that would take time, but I really found some good ones here. Same with my student, I often see that they are bringing, uh, like coming to the class in their skateboarding. And I say, oh, this could be a really good lab we can find for momentum, collision. I really find those here. Not only here, they have a section also, TA, um, no, LA lab assistant training. We do have some lab assistant in our labs. These are really good resources for them. And our lab assistants, uh, some of them are now graduate school and they um, wrote back to me that how the lab assistant job have been helpful for them in grad school serving as a teaching assistant. Similarly, there are um, several websites that I like to use. <clears throat> So one of them is physics classroom, which is a very basic, um, like a high school physics. But the beauty of this website is it explains the basic physics without math. I always tell a student, physics is not math. We are trying to explain an observation with the help of a mathematical equation so that with the different types of variable, we could explain it well. So this is a really good website. They have a lot of uh, simulations and very interactive of quizzes, programs available, and it's completely free. It's a really good resource. I also like that I don't, I haven't used it that much. Compared, that is also some simulation. Some student who wants to learn design simulation for upper level, those are also good. Another resource is Marlow Physics. I serve as a reviewer here. So beauty of this uh, website is that it organizes these resources, open educational resources as a course, for example, whether it's a thermal physics, quantum mechanics, upper level course, normally it's hard to find course material, which are open resource for upper level. So this is a good one. And this one, if somebody submitted a document to be published there, it has to go through a review, serve as a reviewer, then on, it can be published there. Of course, we all know about kind of Academy and MIT Open Courseware. Mm -hmm. Now, I use OpenStax textbook for my introductory physics, algebra based, um, calculus based classes. And I also have convinced one of my colleagues to use Open Textbook, which has been very helpful and a student love book. And this textbook, initially, I thought I was not sure how the pictures and the diagrams are going to be very interactive problems. The questions are also very like, wide variety of problem, conceptual, numerical, um, discussion-based problems, I really like those. Um, I would love to use for my online classes also an OpenStax uh, textbook. I haven't used this yet, this I, I include as a reference because of uh, how to set up the homework and all. I'm still working on that. Hopefully in future um, years, I would be able to do that as well. 
Um, my astronomy class, which is an online, it's a, one of the most popular class, a general education class in our campus. And um, while teaching those general education class, I realized that many students, for those who are going to be in future policymakers, uh, future leaders, the country, and this might be their last science class. So I feel responsible to present the materials in a very interesting way, and they understood why the science behind those. Um, some um, communication for online courses are very, very important. The students really respond well. So some of the website keep updating what the latest news. Um, these are, I really like those um, sky this week. For example, they get the entire week of sky prediction which are object to look at where. Mm -hmm. So NASA also update astronomy picture of the day. Another good website is space weather. And there are others like universe today, sky and telescope. As I say, there are so many information available online. I don't want to uh, like bombard with lot of website, lot of information that just giving them a few where they get enough information, enough mm -hmm. good information. <clears throat> now, when it comes to teaching, I really, as I said, I use a lot of materials. I'm a, I'm very fond of using simulation. Like that helps my understanding also as a teacher. So I'm, I'm, I use, I've been using FET simulation a lot. So it's developed by University of Colorado. It's a great resource over uh, during COVID. I know many of us, many of us have used them as a virtual lab. And the good thing about that, a lot of the teachers is starting from middle school to higher education. They have develop those labs using that and it's uh, it's open so I can download and use it just making some modifications mm -hmm. like that which is a great resource mm -hmm. and students love using it whether it's my in-person class or online class mm -hmm. um, they have like wide like different areas of physics starting from mechanics heat and thermodynamics electricity as you see a lot of options available there now the other one size of the space that is a simple website it's kind of stimulation like when it comes to the how how big is a is our universe? How big is our how big is sun? So this is a great, really great one. So it's the size of the space. If you Google it, you should be able to find it. So I really liked it. And in the beginning of the class, I normally share it with the student, play with this and see where we are. Um, most of you have. I also like to show them and later on I'll show that pale blue dot in the suspended in our Earth look like a dot in the universe, how small we are. Um, another very interesting topic is the um, life of a star. What happens to the star towards the end of life? Is our sun going to be a supernova? Where is sun right now? So that's the last camera's observatory. Have a really good simulation that as an open resource, star in a box. Mm -hmm. Student, like we have done outreach high school to up to our um, like upper level physics student, astronomy student, they love using this one where you can determine, uh, you can give any size of the star and see over the years how the star life changes, which is a really great resource. And these are also, as I have listed earlier, some other websites. <clears throat> Now, we all are, the students are smartphone generation. A lot of apps are available also. Some of that like Skyview, that is also in the beginning, I put it like, oh, take a picture of the uh, um, sky, the Skyview, and there are other apps available and post it. This has been a very popular, very interactive discussion among the students. They love using the app and they have been sharing. Oh, I shared it with my grandma to show the constellations and also how this has been really helpful to understand, to see the sky at night that they have been learning. So because most like I get confused with the direction where to look at which how to see the big deeper and also this is sky where have been very helpful. Another sometimes uh, I do give the uh, my in my exams like um, formula sheet and all. But while practicing, if they need to use formulas, they are all available there. Just taking the time. I know we started late. So quickly, I know I'll just go through it quickly. So as I have a variety of material that I like to use, whether it's simulation, textbook, I use. Um, there are a lot of YouTube videos, good YouTube videos available. And also I create videos like showing the problem solving. One thing I find is students do not like long videos. So all the videos I do is two to five minutes only. Mm -hmm. And then I don't show the entire problem. I stop it there. Okay, I gave enough hints. Now work on it, upload your work. So this has been also very helpful. 
um, giving and practice exam reviews. So um, as I had mentioned in the undergraduate research, the student work with me, we use all open resource data. So the data from NASA, data from uh, Gyro Observatory, Wall Data Center, they have so much data available for people or students to work on it and gain those skills. This has been really helpful for our students. Um, this is also observational astronomy data. I'm just keeping through it quickly. <clears throat> and when it comes to open education sources, so uh, Oklahoma Score has a lot of options for students doing research, getting the funding, um, doing summer internship where they could get paid. And that there's OK LSEM program also for scholarship for the students. Um, also, student um, from Cameron, they, they sponsor the student when they want to present their work at Oklahoma Sci Academy of Science or Oklahoma Research Day. Um, when it comes to future um, OER, just quickly, I was reading the Vision 2030 from NSF and um, National Science Education Board, and these are the three priorities that they listed. And number one, you see accessibility to education to all learners, irrespective of their cultural background or their geographical location, they all should have access to it. And that makes so much sense. And uh, because um, like having interest for STEM, it comes from middle school level. So how can we help those schools, those teachers? Um, in, um, in coming months, I will have a workshop with the astronomy like astronomy teaching workshop with the middle school teachers. I'll be sending emails from uh, to outreach group for teachers to join to learn new teaching technology with astronomy. Um, <clears throat> and um, ethical workforce priority three is like technology. We see that whether it's AI or the, how the technology is developing. It's both uh, like virtual learning, and the hybrid classes, higher education is going to change a lot. So future there, I hope that more and more material will be open, awareness. I use so much open education resources. I feel like I should do something also, like my videos that I create or the materials, I would like to put it in a repository, which could be available for our students across Oklahoma. Um, another thing is finding suitable materials, like good repository. So oh, these are the basic uh, math skills you need. So where can you find those information outside it? Like, or it could be open textbook or other materials available to those. Um, that's all I would like to talk about. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad I'm able to do it. <laughs> Thank you.